I don't know about you, but winter is just around the corner and it's it's been kind of snowy where I'm at. <laughs> so I thought it would be wonderful to paint a very moody, freshly fallen snow, misty forest. We'll be splattering and tapping in some snowflakes. We'll be lifting some paint to create mist. And then of course, we'll be adding a bunch of trees. And the materials that I will be using are the Neptune series. It's the flat wash brush. It holds a lot of water. Neptune is great for holding a lot of water. And the long round brushes, though you do not need to have these brushes to create the trees that I do. I just prefer a nice fine point. A mist bottle and some cold press arches watercolor paper on an acrylic board. So on dry paper, I am using a very watery wet mixture of Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna. And that's what created this uh, a bit more on the warmer side of this gray shade or hue of gray. I am forming these lines up and down as you can see and it's just the very it's the background of my trees I do cover it a lot but I want it to be very wet so then I can remove paint to create the mist you can use wet on wet but I decided to use wet on dry really whatever works for you I'm now placing in an up and down stroke motion uh, some more distant trees. And I will go over uh, these areas. I just wanted to kind of feel out my composition. Now my brush, I have put it in water and then I have dabbed it off on a paper towel and that way I'm able to lift the paint. And then I continue to do that, making sure my brush is clean. That way I'm able to lift the paint. And the reason I can do that is because the paint on the paper is still quite wet. Now the paint is still wet at this point and I was able to drag up some of that color or lift some of the color up onto that very white paper. And then I have added a darker mixture just to go over it in different areas and then I'll soften it by using my Aqua Elite size 12 brush. Forgot to mention that in the very beginning, but I like to use that for blending. So now the paper has dried, I am adding in my first tree. If you like what you see uh, or have been here and haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe and like and leave me a comment, interact with me. I love interacting with you all and learning a bit more about you. And I do my best to get back to the comments, so it may take me a minute. But I do read every single one, so thank you for being here and investing your time into even wanting to comment. I really appreciate it. So to soften, soften any of the trees, I take a, a damp brush and I'm able to blend it out. You'll also notice that I take this damp brush and I lift the paint up by dragging it through the wet tree. And I do that because I want to create a bit softer lines, softer distant trees. So you can see that the tree has now softened by me doing that. Yes, it does take away some of the texture of the tree and the lines, but it's fun and why not experiment with your painting? So I've been doing this a lot lately for the background trees. And of course you can go over these trees with more trees or whatever you want to go over it with, but it's just another fun way to create something interesting in the uh, background trees. Then I go over this area with more lines. You can create some lines for your trees why not I think it can look realistic especially for trees in the very far distance you know you don't necessarily always need detail and texture I also play around a bit I did not have a vision for the composition I just decided to just put paint on paper and I personally like to do that doesn't always work um, sometimes it does I think in this case it did work 
the there isn't really, I guess, a composition to this painting. And I personally feel that you don't need to worry too much about composition if you're painting a misty scene because mist is dramatic, it's unpredictable, and it doesn't always flow the way it you know you might think it would because it's mist and it's just everywhere. <laughs> so um, I feel like for this painting, it's just a matter of layering and lifting paint out to create mist in different areas. But you know, work, do whatever works for you. But you can see that I will put down trees and I will lift them up. It's also a really wonderful and sneaky way to create a very soft trunk in your tree which I personally really like the look of. And so I've been, um, you know, doing that a bit, bit more in my paintings. And you can see I softened those, uh, the base of the tree with that damp brush. And I have to make sure that there's not too much water on that brush because if there was, then the water would pull into the tree and cauliflower, which I do like. So if you haven't tried that, definitely do it. But for this case I did not want that to happen. And now my paper is completely dry and I am laying down larger trees. If you haven't seen how I do different types of trees, I have two videos. My more recent one is this uh, video in the upper right hand corner. So be sure to click that link or save it or whatever um, if you care to learn how I do these trees. Adding in a bit more depth here, some darker color. I had a bit more of the Payne's Gray in this mixture, so that's why it looks a bit bluer. And I am just figuring out where I want uh, trees to be, and then I will just continue lifting paint out, putting trees down, and just playing with it. It's very simple as far as that's all I'm literally doing. <laughs> so you can create some really fun uh, compositions or whatever you want to call it with your paintings by just doing these two things. And I do miss it every so often. I didn't uh, miss it as often as I thought I would. So I did just do the one mist here because I kind of forgot. <laughs> Even though I always miss my trees, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> And I'm also playing around with the voiceover. I've had a lot of people say they don't want the, the background noise or the rain sounds. Let me know. I'm, you know, having a little bit of rain here and there, but mostly the voiceover. So let me know. All right. So I'm going to speed up the video here. And it's just me putting trees and lifting and putting more trees. So I will come back when um, the next stage. All right, so the last 
couple trees here. Once you're happy with how many trees you have, we can move on. But look at that mist. How fun is that? And those tree trunks just by lifting paint out of your wet tree. You can, of course, add more of the, the tree back over that lifted paint as well. Now for the snow, I am using the bleed proof white. It's just a very opaque watercolor. You can use gouache, you can use acrylic, whatever you want to use uh, to create the snow. And I am using a deer foot brush with these very stiff bristles because it, well, I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> use whatever you want. Um, so I dip it into this very watery uh, uh, mixture of this very opaque paint and I dab off the excess and then I decide to flick it. Now doing this, you're gonna create teeny tiny little flecks of snow. And I did this at the first, or for the first layer of my snow because I wanted to show and emphasize that it is snowing really hard, but it's very small snowflakes. I did not add snow to the trees because I wanted it to be that more freshly fallen snow. You can also take a cheaper brush, which this is another artist brush, and you can place specific um, uh, dots on your, your page. I don't do this very often because uh, it takes too long. <laughs> or you can do the other method, which is smacking the snow or tapping the snow um, on your paper. Though I will let you know that this is not as controlled and you might get snowflakes everywhere. And once you're happy with that, it's time to remove the tape. And I have a lot of tape lovers on here, so I decided to use some tape. I don't usually use it, but it is satisfying when you are uh, done and you do remove the tape. Let me know, do you use tape? Do you not use tape? Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and you like what you see. And I hope that you enjoy uh, enjoyed this painting and paint something similar or get inspired. And I'll leave you with this quote. Take care, my friends. Bye.